Hello everyone, I am Anish and today we are going to solve for the given below circuit which states that we have to plot the output waveform. Uh, so like for plotting the waveform first we have to check whether the circuit is uh, first order or second order. So for first order it will be fairly straightforward. If it is second order, second order then the analysis will be a bit much more difficult. right? So for, for calculating the like dependency of the C1 and C2 independent uh, parameters we have to like first short the input right we have to make the independent sources zero in this case the voltage now if we check the voltage of the caps right this is vc2 and this is vc1 so the voltage across them are dependent on each other right so we will have only one energy storing limit which is independent so we will have a uh, only one time constant so for calculating the time constant, we have already found out C equivalent which is C1, C1 plus C2 as the voltages across the multi dependent. And for calculating the equivalent resistance, right, we can just check the equivalent resistance from one end of the uh, from one capacitor only and short the input. Here the output plays no role. We just check check from the capacitor itself. So from this end, we will see that uh, we are checking that R1 is parallel with R2. So R equivalent will be R1 parallel with R2. So the time constant of the circuit will be C1 plus C2 into R1 parallel with R2. Right. So after calculating the time constant, now we will calculate the output voltage waveform. So for that, we have to check for the initial and final conditions of the output voltage. So initially as there were no charges present in the caps, right? So they will try to become short circuit. And there are resistance here and resistance here. C1 and C2. R1 and R2. So as they are short, this will this should be short. And this is step voltage applied at T is equal to 0 plus right of VP. Now what will happen is like this will become like a very low impedance and this will become very low impedance across this R as this is a short circuit right. So this circuit will become something like this. Here is C, here is C, C1, C2 and here is VP. Now as we know that uh, capacitor doesn't allow sudden change of voltage. Uh, it has the inherent property. But uh, in one case, it will allow change of voltage as we have correct, directly connected a voltage source across it, an ideal voltage source. So what will happen is a huge impulse current will flow through the circuit and instantly this will charge the C1 and C2. So how to calculate that voltage at VC1, VC2? That I will tell. Like this is VC1 and this is VC2. Now applying simple KVL, VC1 plus VC2 is equal to VP. Right? Now, also one more thing, as the these two are printed in series, right? The charge will be same across them. And what's the formula of charge? K is equal to C V and C1 V C1 equals to C2 V C2. Now from these two equations, right? If we solve these two equations, we'll get to know that V C2, which is our output voltage, equals to V P into C1 divided by C1 plus C2. Right, you can just easily remember this like uh, that current division rule, right? That you can remember it like that. So as we get this voltage, we got the initial voltage. Now we'll go for the final uh, steady state voltage across the output node, right? Finally, the current through the caps will be zero, and it will be act like a simple simple voltage divider circuit. Here we have applied VD, so VP, and V naught of T, right? V naught of infinity should be equals to Vp into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, like as you can see, like uh, the initial and final voltages are dependent on the like elements present in the circuit. So it may so happen that it may charge or discharge depending whether the initial voltage or final voltage is more. So if we take for three cases, right, there will be three cases. One case will be R1C1 is greater than R2C2. So for 
this case we can like check the condition that it will be like something uh, I think v naught of 0 plus is more than v naught of infinity so in this case it will discharge just for cross checking right uh, if we like put the values over here v p into c1 plus c2 greater than v p into r2 by r1 plus r2 now this will go over here this will be 1 plus r1 over r2 greater than 1 plus c2 over c1 right now if we will just cancel this once r1 c1 is greater than r2 c2 so for this case right so it will uh, discharge so if we just plot the waveform here if i zoom in a bit plot the waveform initially it, ha it will have more voltage and finally it will settle to less voltage so it will be something like this this will be p into c1 over c1 plus c2 and p into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 and settle at 4 tau v naught of dt and here the time constant you know we have calculated already c1 plus c2 to r1 parallel with r2 right this we have calculated already now the second case will be where r2 c2 is greater than r1 c1 so in this case uh, the v naught of 0 plus is less than v naught of infinity you can just check it for yourself so here it will charge T V naught and it will go from something like here to here. The V naught of infinity is already calculated from the previous slide. Like as you can check from here, the values won't change. This will remain same, same right. Now for the third case, it's uh, here the also the time constant will be also same. I forgot to mention this tau is equal to c1 plus c2 and r1 parallel with r2 now coming to the third case third case is where r1 c1 equals to r2 c2 now here if you check the initial voltage is equal to the final voltage so the circuit won't at all uh, like charge or discharge it will uh, settle immediately to a constant value which is equals to vp into c1 divided by c1 plus c2 or it is equals to vp into r2 over r1 plus r2 if you check uh, both of these values will come to same only right now my question is what will be the time constant for this circuit the time constant as we cal calculated earlier is c1 plus c2 r1 divided by r2 so will it be the same or be something different <coughs> just think about it now if you think about it like this won't be the same because for this condition no this is instantly settling it is following the input only with attenuated signal there is no distortion so it will settle immediately and as it's following the input the time constant for the circuit will be zero it won't be this one so the time constant will be this so I think that's it for this question only. If you have any more doubts or anything you want to know, you can just uh, post it in the comments or send it to my telegram channel. Thank you.